السلام علیکم ویلکم ٹو مائی ویڈیو سیریز آن سرچنگ الگورتھمس ان آرٹیفیشل انٹیلیجنس دس ویڈیو کنٹینیوز اوور ڈسکشن آن لوکل سرچ الگورتھمس ہل کلائمبنگ اینڈ اٹس ویرینٹس ورکس ویل بٹ دے کین گیٹ اسٹرک ان لوکل آپٹیما فٹ اف وی کوڈ ایوالو بیٹر سولوشنس اوور ٹائم جسٹ لائک نیچر ڈز دیٹس ایگزیکٹلی واٹ جینیٹک الگورتھمس ڈو لیٹس ان ریویل how they bring the power of evolution to optimization. Genetic algorithm is an optimization technique inspired by Darwin's theory of evolution. It's used to solve problems where traditional methods struggle. Genetic algorithms find the best solution by evolving a population of candidate solutions over multiple generations, just like species evolve over time. It operates on a population of candidate solutions using selection, crossover and mutation to improve performance based on a fitness function. Before we get into the GA steps, let's quickly go over some key terms. Population is a set of randomly generated initial candidate solutions. A potential solution is represented in a coded format, often as strings of binary values. These representations of solutions are called chromosome. A part of the chromosome that represent one character of a solution is called a gene. Fitness function evaluates how good a solution is. The higher the fitness, the better the solution. Selection is the process of choosing the best chromosomes to create the next generation. Crossover is a genetic operation where two parent chromosomes combine to create offspring. Mutation is a slight random change in a chromosome to introduce diversity and prevent premature convergence. Now let's go step by step through how genetic algorithms work. We start with the set of randomly generated solution called initial population. Step 2 is to evaluate the fitness. Each chromosome is scored using the fitness function. Next step is selection. The best solutions are chosen for reproduction often using methods like roulette wheel or tournament selection. Next is crossover. The selected parents combine their genes to create a new offspring solution. Number 5th, mutation. Some offspring undergo small random changes to introduce the variations. Steps 2 to 5 continue for multiple generations until we reach the best solution or the stopping criteria. Before we can apply a genetic algorithm to a problem, we need to answer these questions. Number 1 How is an individual represented? Number 2. What is the fitness function? Number 3. How are individuals selected? And number 4. How do individuals reproduce? So let's start answering these questions one by one. First, individual representation. Each state or individual is represented as a string over a finite alphabet. It is also called chromosome which contains genes. In many problems we use binary representation. For instance, take the number 607. It becomes this binary string. Each bit would represent a gene in our chromosome. But for some problems like traveling salesman problem, we use permutation representation. Here a chromosome like 3142 means we visit the cities in the order city 3 city 1 city 4 and city 2 or take the example of n queens problem a chromosome like 32748552 could represent queens positions each value tells us the row number where the queen is placed in each column next is fitness evaluation Let's say we are minimizing a function like f of x equals to x square minus 3x minus 7. In this case, the lower the function value, the better the fitness. We want to evolve the solution that bring the function value closer to the minimum. In n queens, fitness is about non-attacking pairs. More non-attacking pairs, better solution. If we check the queen in the first column with the rest of the queens, it is only attacking the queen in the last column so there are six non attacking pairs let's check for the second queen it is attacking the queen in the fourth column 
so there are five non attacking pairs with the second queen let's check the third queen it is attacking the last queen so there are four non attacking pairs fourth queen is not attacking anyone similarly for the fifth queen there are three non attacking pairs for sixth and seventh there is one non attacking pair adding them all up you get a fitness score of 24 for this solution once we evaluate the fitness the next question is which individuals get to become parents this is called parent selection and it determines how solutions are chosen to pass on their genes first up the classic roulette wheel selection here individuals are selected proportionally to their fitness it's like spinning a wheel where fitter individuals get larger slices here we have four individuals each with their fitness value to calculate the selection probability we will divide the fitness value with the sum of the fitness values of all individuals which is 100 that means individual d with the highest fitness has the higher chance of being selected but even a with low fitness still has a shot just a smaller one stochastic universal sampling is a more stable version of roulette wheel instead of one random spin we use multiple evenly spaced pointers ensuring better diversity in parent selection next we have linear rank selection here individuals are ranked and selection probability depends on their rank not raw fitness this avoids the problem where one super fit individual dominates the whole population first step is to assign the ranks to the individuals based on their fitness value from lower to higher so the individual with the fitness value that is lower gets the rank 1 and subsequently the remaining ones so the individual with the highest fitness value that is 45 gets the rank 4 based on the rank the selection probability is calculated this table gives a comparison of roulette wheel selection and linear rank selection methods as you can see ranking smooths out extreme fitness differences and maintains the selection pressure there are other methods we won't dive into here like tournament selection truncation selection boltzmann selection elitism where the top individuals are carried to the next generation unchanged now comes crossover this is how we mix the genetic material you can have single point crossover where you split two parents at one point and exchange the segments so first portion from parent 1 and the last portion from parent 2 combines to form a new offspring similarly the first portion from parent 2 and the last portion from parent 1 combines to form a new offspring we can also use two point crossover where two random crossover points are selected and the segment between them is interchanged keeping the rest of genes intact you can also visualize the example of crossover on n queens problem here first portion from parent 1 and the last portion from parent 2 combines to form a new offspring Similarly the first portion from parent 2 and the last portion from parent 1 combines to form a new generation Finally mutation this adds randomness and help us escape local optima In binary chromosomes mutation could be a bit flip like changing 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 But in permutation representation it could be randomly changing a bit For example we can change selected bits with any number between 1 to 8 so after mutation 5 is replaced by 6 and 2 is replaced by 3 swap mutation can also be used in this case select two genes in a chromosome and then interchange their positions mutation adds randomness but we don't want too much randomness that's where the mutation rates come in mutation rate defines the probability of mutating a gene in an individual a higher mutation rate increases the diversity but may disrupt the good solutions a lower rate helps refine solutions but risk premature convergence suppose you have a population of 10 individuals each represented by 8 genes for example an 8 bit binary string if a mutation rate is 0.1 that is 10% then each gene has a 10% chance of being mutated in this video 
We didn't run a full genetic algorithm, but we understood each step through intuitive examples. From individual representation and fitness evaluation to how selection, crossover and mutation work, we now have a solid grasp of how genetic algorithm evolves solution over generations. These concepts are the building blocks. Once you are comfortable with them, implementing a genetic algorithm becomes much easier. We will discuss a complete examples of implementing a genetic algorithm to a problem in the next video. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more videos on data science and AI. See you next time.